My friends, many of us have had uh, similar experiences as we were children growing up being uh, trained by our parents. Our parents, of course, uh, sought to give us character and to develop a personality. And this, of course, was all for our good and for our future. Our parents would say that they were concerned about uh, our future survival in the world because, if truth be told, uh, they knew, as we know, that sometimes there are bad people and bad situations out there. Jesus, too, was preparing his disciples. The gospel passage that we proclaim today from St. Matthew uh, shows us how Jesus, who loved his disciples, who cared for them, was actually preparing them uh, for the world, for survival in the world. He knew that they, as his representatives, would be tested and tempted. I send you out as sheep in wolves, so be wise as serpents and be innocent as doves. Is it possible to be both? Is it possible to be wise as serpents? I have no idea why snakes are wise, but there it is. But is it possible to be both wise and at the same time gentle and innocent as a dove? Is it possible to be both clever and also to be without guile, to be shrewd and to be compassionate. This is what Jesus asks of his disciples to try to be both, and it is possible. This, by the way, was one of the uh, scripture passages uh, that became famous or that was used by Martin Luther King in a memorial sermon that he gave. Uh, be wise as serpents and be innocent as doves. And uh, from what we know of him and uh, his life, we can see how appropriate and how personal he took this particular scripture passage. So this combination of uh, being innocent and at the same time being shrewd or wise is uh, paradoxical. It is contradictory. Uh, but nevertheless, the uh, combination of the two is what Jesus asks of his disciples then and of what he asks of us today as we face the world, as we go on mission uh, to the world. Let us never make the mistake to think that just the apostles or just those disciples or even the uh, clergy of today are those who take the responsibility seriously to be missionaries or to be sent into the world. If you're baptized, you are sent on a mission. Each and every one of us, by virtue of our baptism, becomes a disciple of Christ, and we need to go into the world to be him and to share him with others. The clue in this uh, particular paradox or this particular contradiction, apparent contradiction, is actually in Jesus himself. Jesus was both compassionate and shrewd. The scriptures reveal Jesus as being both uh, quite uh, wise and uh, quite shrewd in certain situations, certainly when he was in confrontation with the Pharisees, and when they were not necessarily being sincere in questioning him or in speaking with him. We could see how straightforward Jesus could be, matter of fact, and uh, that exhibits uh, one part of this, uh, shall we say, personality that the Christian is meant to have. And of course, we also know the other side. We know that Jesus, whenever faced with pain or with need or with su suffering, was extremely compassionate, extremely gentle, extremely kind. So Jesus in his own life, by his actions and by his words, really exemplified 
this particular scripture passage of what he expected his disciples to be. Jesus provides himself as the example to them and to us. We are the disciples of our Lord today. We ask him to help us to be as he was, both innocent as a dove and wise as a servant, so that we can do two things. First, simply survive in a hostile culture and in a hostile society, and secondly, to change it. To be his disciples means to bring Jesus to others. May we do exactly that. And now, my friends, join me in offering our prayers and our petitions to our Father in heaven. Let us pray for our Holy Father, who reflects both wisdom and the gentleness of Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Let us pray for true leaders of our societies. May they serve with shrewdness and compassion. For this we pray to the Lord. We pray for those of you at home who have sent in your petitions and asked for prayers. May the Lord in his mercy be close to you. For you we pray to the Lord. For those who suffer in any way and for those who care for them, we pray to the Lord. And for those who have died and those who mourn them, we pray to the Lord. Father in heaven, hear the prayers of your people expressed in our deep faith. Answer them in your love for us, and we ask this of you through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, the fruit of the vine and the work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Amen. God, we ask you to receive us and to be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me of my sins. And pray now, my friends, that this our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, look kindly on these gifts we present on the Feast of St. Benedict. By following his example in seeking you, may we know unity and peace in your service, and grant this to us through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks. You are glorified in your saints, for their glory is the crowning of your gifts. In their lives on earth, you give us an example. In our communion with them, you give us their friendship. In their prayer for the church, you give us strength and protection. This great company of witnesses spurs us on to victory to share their prize of everlasting glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, with angels and archangels and the whole company of saints, we sing our ending hymn of praise. <laughs> 